Hey guys, how you doing? It's been a while. I've been doing a lot to the truck. <clears throat> I guess I'll start with the trailer. I had an old beat up Craftsman lawn trailer. Um, I had some downtime, so I thought I'd make it match the truck. Um, You know, usually I use this with the mower, but sometimes the mower is too light uh, when you get this thing filled up with crap. And I also have a uh, Kawasaki Terex. Sometimes I have to pull it with, but the problem with that is it's so big, you can't even see the trailer behind you. So I thought it'd be fun. Maybe to do some yard work with this. It's kind of an in-between. Quite a bit heavier than, uh, you know, a riding mower. So, I didn't bother doing the inside of the bed. It's going to get all banged up again anyways. I just scraped off all the loose paint and wire wheeled it. I didn't bother sanding it down and trying to weather it like I did the truck. Um, just again, it's it's going to get beat up anyways. I didn't make a little, little hitch for it. Uh, what else? So I noticed I headed out on the road. The road was wet one day and front tires started throwing a bunch of stuff to the back fenders so then the rear fenders were getting covered and I had these um, I don't know they're just cheap mud flaps they were never used um, but they do a good job you can see they've been doing what they're supposed to Thing on this side but I had to cut it for the exhaust so those work pretty good they look good on there <clears throat> so I've been messing with that Makuni carb I'm getting kind of fed up ordering jets left and right I think I have every jet ever made for it, different needle and seat. And I saw on YouTube a guy goes by Redneck Tractors. He has the same engine. It was also natural gas powered and he converted it to gasoline. And he's got it in a a uh, mud mower. It's pretty pretty bad. It's got black mambas on the back and it's like man it, it'll do burnouts on trailers. It'll do doing wheelies through mud holes. So I asked him what he was using for a carburetor you know because it runs so good and he told me uh, a Predator 670 their V twin, the Harbor Freight. So that's what I got. And there was also a gas version of this engine, and you used to be able to get a factory intake manifold, which look just like this one. This is the wrong one. I ordered this a long time ago before uh, before I even put that Makuni on it because I was going to do the same thing and I thought I had the right one but I did not this is for a smaller engine but it would look very similar to this well the one for this engine is discontinued and I looked around for a couple days online called a few places couldn't figure it out, couldn't find it. But I got thinking, you know, I built the first 
intake for it. I could just always build another one. And I've grown accustomed to having that carb coming off the side of the engine. Whereas the factory intake puts the carb up over top. Um, <clears throat> you know, a couple reasons. It keeps the carb down low. I don't need a fuel pump. And if you got to work on it a lot, and you're pulling the fuel line, it's not leaking the gas on top of the engine. Now this works good in my situation because it's covered by this cab. If you were doing this to a, a riding mower or a, a garden tractor, that might not be ideal because it'd be hanging out the side. So I just started over, cut my old intake apart here, had to take the cab off again, pull the exhaust and everything so I could get to it. But uh, I'm uh, <clears throat> much happier with that intake. It's very smooth inside. Now I think a big problem I had with my old setup is there was no divider. It was like a single plane intake. So I didn't know what cylinder was getting what, um, you know, and I just, I don't know enough about these carbs, I guess. So I was ready to try something else. And I'm pretty happy with it. I still have to make a choke cable and throttle cable. Uh, I gotta get another fuel filter too. I just have that temporary. So this has, I don't know if you can see it, a fuel shutoff solenoid. I just grounded it to the engine and then took power off of the hot side of the light switch, which is key on only power. So that works well. Let's see if it'll start back up. I had it running a few minutes ago. in it but already a huge difference the all the popping at idle completely went away um, I'm pretty sure this this will fix it that uh, I also like this air filter better it, it just gives it more of a factory look the Outer covers just off of one of those uh, Massey Ferguson's 10 or 12 horse to come see. The back plate I made, it's a little heavy. It's, it's 3 16 It was actually uh, the other cutout from this grill on the Jeep. But it was the right size for those filters. And now I dropped it down to, I don't know if you can tell, the, um, I dropped it down for uh, the fuel line. It, it was easier. It gave me more clearance rather than centering it. Um, and I didn't realize at the time, but it saved me a lot of work with the center stud because now that stud falls underneath the opening for the carb and I didn't have to build a, a bridge over it or whatever to have that stud coming out. So that helped a lot too. So yep, I gotta come up with a choke cable. Oh, that's another thing. I had to, I pulled the choke shaft out and I had to cut the arm off. 
rewelded it uh, before it came forward past this point where it would have hit. So now it's clear. So yeah, get me a choke cable. Come up with a new throttle cable. Um, you know, the other throttle cable is made for these Makunis, and I probably could have modified it to make it fit, but since it, you know, goes with this carb, I'm going to have to try to sell this thing, I guess. Um, I'd, I'd rather keep it with the carburetor. So, yeah, I'll uh, finish up those last few things, and... I got all kinds of brush and stuff around my pond. I want to try using the trailer. I got to cut down and piles of bricks and that. So thanks for watching. Bye.